If you find that this message has been a blessing to you, please take a moment and share with someone. Thank you. Thank you for supporting Honest News Network. We're going to do something a little different in this message. How many know that God's Word is creative, right? God's Word is creative. God creates with His Word. That's what we're going to be looking at in this lesson. The creative power of God's Word. Let's open in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us insight, giving us understanding. Lord, to help your people to grow. We pray, Lord, that you bless and anoint, Lord, as we minister your word, as we instruct and teach in your word, Lord, that your people may benefit from this lesson, Lord, that they may understand and that they may grow in the knowledge of the truth, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen. Now, how many know that the that the uh, the Hebrew word and the Greek word, but the let's focus on the Hebrew word. The word be, right? The word be means to become. That's what it means, to become. So, if the word be means to become, then how can this help us to understand how God is creating with his word, even in our own lives. How is God creating with his word in the life of the believer? Well, remember, Jesus used this word when he said, you must be born again, right? He also said, be ye therefore perfect, as your Father in heaven is perfect. Remember, it means to become, right? It also means to arrive. Are you listening? To arrive. I think I spelled that right. Two R's? No, there's one R, right? To arrive. I think that's right. <laughs> Never was very well at uh, in English or in uh, spelling. Everything, I just want you to know, folks, all my education, for the most part, as far as grammar, uh, has, has been from the Lord, because I gained nothing when I was in school, very little. Um, I, I really didn't get a whole lot from... The public school. For some reason, I just could not comprehend the things that they were teaching. And so it was after I got saved that the Lord taught me grammar. He taught me these things in the Spirit. Other than that, I, I had no... Other than that, I had no, uh, no real education in grammar. Um... I'll just also tell you this. 
I couldn't even read really. Um, the, the public school really did not do me any real service or benefit. In fact, because it was so hard for me to learn, um, my dad had placed a curse upon my life by calling me bonehead. Um, and one day the Lord spoke to me and said, he said, the reason why you can't think for yourself is because your brain is like a bone. He says, you've never used it. it. The brain is supposed to be a muscle and it's something you use. Well, my dad had spent, spoke that curse over my life so long that it, literally my, I had become cursed. In my mind, I couldn't comprehend. I couldn't, I couldn't uh, understand. So it took a real miracle of God for me to be able to even read and comprehend the things I'm reading. And the first thing God really helped me to be able to read and comprehend, obviously, was the Bible. And so all the wisdom, the education, the intellect, everything that I have, I have to attribute to God's glory and to his word, to the actual scriptures, because without the scriptures, I had no real vocabulary or education. So, um, so if you see me misspell a word, that might be why, but, um, so, so to help you understand God, what God is saying to us is, what I'm doing in your life, you can't do yourself, okay? That's why he uses this word be, uh, because be is state of being in grammar, right? But then remember, Peter used the word be, and he said, being born again. Now, when you add this suffix of ing on the end of be, what do you get, right? You get action. It's no longer a noun now what is it now it becomes an adjective right because it's got action so peter said something a little different than jesus and the reason being is because jesus spoke in the fullness of god's word and so when jesus said be born again he was saying in the ultimate Basically, what Jesus was saying is what we see in the book of Revelation with the man-child. How many know the man-child is experiencing the new birth, fully being born again? Because the scripture says she brought forth a man-child, full, fully birthed. But when we are saved or come to the knowledge of the truth, it's not the ultimate. It's just the beginning. So you got to understand that the, God's plan is progressive, okay? Um, it starts out. It starts out with initial, then progressive, and then final. But when Jesus spoke when he was on the earth, he spoke in the fullness of God the Father's voice of what God wanted, what he what he expected, which was perfection, okay? So Jesus said, be ye therefore perfect, even as, uh, uh, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. He was offering them the fullness at that time, but they couldn't comprehend it. They couldn't receive it. And the reason they couldn't receive it is because God's word is creative. God was not telling them to do something. He was telling them to be something. Are you listening? And that's what he's saying to you and I today. Remember when he spoke to Abram and he said, walk thou before me in what? Be perfect. God's word is creative. God's not speaking to you and I to do something in ourselves, in of ourselves. What God is doing, in, in, in fact, the scripture that really helps to understand what God is saying is receiving the word of God, the engrafted word, with meekness. In other words, you humble yourself and accept God's words. God's words literally 
are creating. They're creative. That's why even David learned the revelation. Create within me a clean heart. Renew within me a right spirit, right? He, David understood, I need creative work done in my heart, in my life. So what David came to discover is, I can't do it. That's why he finally got somewhere with God, because he realized this is not something I can do. When we come to that realization, brothers and sisters, to that understanding that it's not something you and I can do, then God can do something in our hearts and our lives. So God, over and over, he's using this word be in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And it means to become or to arrive. Are you listening? So this is the ultimate. So let's take a look at some words that have this word B. Or these two letters at the beginning of the word. Take a look. You have B. Uh, behold. Think of that. Think of that. That means take notice, right? Behold. How about, how about be loved or beloved? Are you seeing what's going on here, folks? This word be means to be married. This has to do with the marriage. That's why we oftentimes see this word be going along with the word love, beloved. Okay? There is also a word that I think is very important. It's not so much in the Hebrew or the Greek as far as in our English vocabulary, and that's behave. Now, there is that word, I think it's in the Greek, uh, it's in the English and the Greek, and it's, uh, he behaved himself, no, I guess it's in the Hebrew, which was David behaved himself more wisely, right? He behaved himself more wisely. Now, we know behave, it has to do with our uh, has to do with our submission and obedience, right? That's what it means to behave. But how many know you can behave uh, in, in a rebellious way too? So behave does not necessarily mean that you're doing right. It's a behavior. It's actually an attitude. It's what you do. I don't want to so much get on that as I want you to see God's creative power in his word. How about this? God said, be fruitful. Be fruitful. We see this word be being used quite a bit in God's creation when he created the heavens and the earth. When God is in creation mode, he's using this word be over and over and over and over. Be fruitful and multiply. The, God is expressing himself to us, brothers and sisters. I asked the Lord one day, I said, I said, Lord, why did you give us the Bible? And this is what he said to me. He says, I am a spirit. I gave you the Bible to communicate with you. Pretty simple, right? But you know, if you don't ask God, don't expect an answer. And I, and I quite frequently will ask God questions. A lot of folks don't, but, but I do. I ask God a lot of questions because I want to learn. And the Lord is ready to teach. He's ready to share uh, the truth with us if we're open to receive. So this word be is used over and over and over. And I want you, as a homework lesson, if you will, I want you to go in the Bible and do a study on this word be. I want you to begin to discover how often this is being used. 
And remember, it means to be married, right? Whoops. It means to be married. Or joined. To enjoin, right? Loved. Whoops. To, to be beloved of the Father. So, we see often in the scripture the conjunction of be and love. Be love. Be loved. It's state of being. This is God's creative power. His creative word. God is not telling you and I to do something with our own energy or our own physical energy. Even the works of God are God working through us. It's not our own work. Jesus said, the works that I do are not my works, right? It's the work of the Father. God, the Father, was expressing himself through the Son. That's why the scripture says that Jesus was the very expressed image of the Father. Jesus said, if you don't believe me, believe for the very work's sake, right? So God was speaking even through his works. The work that Jesus did was the, was the language of the Father. He was speaking because God's a spirit. He was expressing himself to his creation not just in word, but in deed, right? And that's how we are supposed to be. We're supposed to be like our Heavenly Father. If we're going to be joined and become one with God, then we must be perfect, even as our Heavenly Father is perfect. Are you listening, folks? How many know that word perfect means complete, finished, fulfilled? Amen. So you can see where the Lord's leading us here. When, he start, when we start seeing these words be, and then we see that be goes together with perfect, this is the ultimate. This is, this is supreme, perfection, right? Be perfect. It's not something you can do. It's God's creative power in his word speaking into your life that recreates you, that creates you in his own image. So it's not something we can do. God's not giving us instructions to say, do this. He's not saying be perfect in the sense that it's something you can do. He's saying, receive my words. I'm making you perfect if you'll receive my words. My words are creative power. Amen. You see the level that the Holy Ghost is taking this ministry to, that he's taking us to, so that we might receive the creative word into our own hearts and be changed, to be transformed. Amen. And God is giving us this understanding in this hour, so that we might be perfect, even as our Heavenly Father is perfect. <clears throat> so I want you to, as a, as a, as a uh, home, homework lesson, on your own time, I want you to look this word, be, and I want you to look up the words in the scripture that use the word be in conjunction with a word, like beloved um, or behold. Uh, there's all kinds of different words out there that use the word be as a conjunction with the, uh, with the word. But the two that I like most, what I like most is behold, because that is... God speaking to us, behold. Or it's also, I'm not sure if you can see this, is low. Low and behold. 
right? Behold means low, or low means behold. It's the same thing. Low and behold, and then God can speak because he, now he has our attention. Behold, God is a spirit. Behold, God is the creator. Behold, right? And be loved. Be loved. Be loved. Be loved. Do you see what God is saying? He's saying, receive my love, right? He's saying, be loved. Let me love you. Let me share my love with you. Let me make you. Let me... Uh, make you perfect in love. See, God is creating within us his love and taking out and casting out that fear, removing that fear, and so that we might be made perfect in love. Uh, and I was looking up the scriptures this morning, being made perfect in one, Jesus said in the garden, he was praying to the Father, and he said, uh, being uh, made perfect in love. Do you see where God's going with this? And it all comes down to behold the love of God. Behold God's love. Behold what manner of love wherewith our Father has loved us, that we should be called the sons of God. So I think I've given you uh, uh, some framework here, something to work with, something to cause you to be inspired to study his word and to dig deeper into the truth so that you can know your heavenly father, so you can know God, that God is not flesh and blood. He's a spirit. God is a spirit, folks. And if we're going to receive from God, the creator, then we need to understand how he is communicating with us. Amen. That's why Jesus could speak words over a leper and they'd be cleansed. Be thou clean. And they were clean. Why? Because God's word is creative. God speaks it out of nothing, right? As he speaks those things that are not as though they were. He takes that which is not and he creates from nothing. How does, how does he do that? Well, I'll tell you how he does that. He does that in a way that you and I can't. Because he has something you and I don't have. He has the power. Are you listening? He has the power, folks. He has the authority. He has the real dudamus power. And because of that power, he is who he is. That's how he's seated in his throne. That's how God is who he is. If it wasn't for his power, he wouldn't be God. That's why we must understand that the word of God or the kingdom of God is not in word only, but in power. God speaks to you and I with his word, which is what? Powerful. God's word is powerful. It's creative. So we're not just hearing the words of a man. We're hearing the very words that God himself spoke the worlds into existence with. So when you open your heart, when you humble yourself, open your heart and receive God's word, his word is creative. His word is creating within you. His word is creative. Are you listening? So now I guess you can more understand what David was talking about. When David said, create within me a clean heart. David understood God's language. He understood God's communication. He began to understand, if I'm going to receive something from God, I need to understand it's not something I can do. Amen. Praise the Lord. I noticed that the, uh, I'm going to turn that off on the computer where the time 
It times out. Sorry about that. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. So I think uh, I think that if you will look this word up, it will greatly enrich your life as it has mine already. That if you will understand this word, be. Because this right here is the ultimate. This is the supreme. And I I didn't even scratch the surface of how many words and, and what we could learn from this just these two letters. Just from these. And by the way, this right here is the first letter in God himself. L. I may know that. El Shaddai. Right? The almighty God. I might myself look up this letter B in Hebrew and find out what just that letter, the meaning of that letter B. Why? Why did God put B? How many know God has chose the English language for the gospel to be shared? It is being shared in other translations around the world, but God has chose English. That's why the King James Version is the God is the version God God chose. And he, he chose King, King James to, to uh, give us the scriptures. But did you know that's under attack today? And they're trying to even put movies out saying that Jesus spoke in Aramaic. Aramaic? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. That's a, that's a lie. That's, that's, that's leading people into Islam. How many know that? That's Muslims. That's Islam. That's the Freemasons. That's the Catholic Church. Jesus was a Hebrew, and he spoke in Hebrew. How many know that? When he was on the cross, what did he say? Did he speak in Aramaic or Aramaic? No, he spoke in Hebrew, right? Look it up yourself. He even used, he, he, while he was saying, why hast thou forsake me? He used the word El, which is God, almighty God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So understand that the letters in the English, they have meaning because those letters are also used in the Hebrew. Are you listening? For whatever reason, God chose English. Not because just because of for Americans. How many know predominantly across the whole earth, English is the main language of, of the whole earth right now? They'd like to change that. They want to come up with another language. They've been kicking around a couple of different languages. I can't remember now, Esperero or something like that. It's supposed to be more of an American and Spanish language. It's going to be the new language. Obama was talking about it. But there's really only one language. Um, there's really only one language that God speaks, and how many know what that is? It's love right? God speaks the language of love, but not the love the world's talking about. No. God speaks spirit, right? And life. God's words are spirit and they are life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Peter said to Jesus, where are we going to go? Thou only has the words of eternal life. Praise the Lord. So please, take the time to understand, to look up these words for yourself. It will change your life. If this message hasn't already begun to change your life, the way you, your perception, the way you see God, the way you understand even learning, in the way you understand studying his word. I mean, just knowing that his words, when he speaks to us, are creative, that we are to receive those creative words, and they will change us. They will transform us. You're not just reading another book. When you see the words of God in the Bible, those are creative words to change and to transform us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Not only that, but the word of God is, and <clears throat> the word of God is, is, uh, is incorruptible. 
Amen? Praise the Lord. Well, that's all for this lesson. I, I hope you will go ahead and do that and not leave it undone. God bless you. the power in the name